Before we start, please like and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell for more video updates. In this lesson, you will learn how the quantum mechanical model of the atom describes the energies and positions of the electrons. In particular, we will develop picture of the electron arrangements in atoms. A picture that allows us to account for the chemistry of the various elements. So now let's start reviewing the Bohr's model of the atom. At the beginning of the 20th century, a new field of study as quantum mechanics emerged. One of the founders of this field was a Danish physicist, Niels Bohr, who was interested in explaining the discrete line spectrum observed when light was emitted by different elements. Bohr was also interested in the structure of the atom which was a topic of much debate at the time. Numerous models of the atom had been postulated based on experimental results including the electron by J.J. Thomson and the discovery result of the nucleus by Ernest Rutherford. Bohr supported the planetary model in which electrons revolved around a positively charged nucleus like the rings around Saturn or alternately the planets around the Sun. In 1911, at the age of 25, Niels Bohr received his Doctor of Philosophy in Physics. He was convinced that the atom could be pictured as a small positive nucleus with electrons orbiting around it. Over the next two years, Bohr constructed a model of the hydrogen atom with quantized energy levels. Bohr pictured the electron moving in circular orbits corresponding to the various allowed energy levels. He suggested that the electron could jump to a different orbit by absorbing or emitting a photon of light with exactly the correct energy content. At first, Bohr's model appeared very promising. It fit the hydrogen atom very well. However, when this model was applied to atoms other than hydrogen, it did not work. In fact, further experiments showed that the Bohr's model is fundamentally incorrect. Although the Bohr theory model paved the way for later the orals, it is important to realize that current theory of atomic structure is not the same as the Bohr model. Electrons do not move around the nucleus in circular orbits like planet or them the Sun. When Schrödinger carried out a mathematical analysis, he found out that it led to a new model for the hydrogen atom that seemed to apply equally well to other atoms something Bohr's model failed to do. He called this as wave mechanical model of the atom. In wave mechanical model, orbitals are nothing like orbits. Squaring the orbital gives the volume of space in which the probability of finding the electron is high, the electron cloud, electron density. Schrodinger's equation required the use of quantum numbers to describe each electron within an atom corresponding to the orbital size, shape, and orientation in space. Later it was found that one needed a quantum number associated with the electron speed. Quantum numbers and orbital. First is the principal quantum number. It describes the size and energy of the rub itol and relative distance from nucleus. The possible values of n are positive integers. Second is the angular momentum quantum number. It describes the shape of the orbitals. The third one is magnetic quantum number. It describes the orientation of the orbital sound around the nucleus. And the last one, spin quantum number. It indicates the direction of the electron in spinning. Before we continue, please like and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell for more video updates. This time let's watch Electron Configuration You need to be familiar with the structure of an atom before going any further, and you may wish to look at the lesson Parts of an Atom, Their Charge and Their Mass first. Electrons are arranged in energy levels or shells around the nucleus of an atom. The actual orbit shapes are a bit too complicated to cover in such a short lesson, but on average the orbital radius increases as the energy levels increase. In our diagrams, 
The shell nearest the nucleus is going to represent the lowest energy level or shell and we draw a circle to depict each shell. We use a dot or a cross to represent each electron and we'll represent the nucleus by the chemical symbol. Each electron in an atom is in a particular shell and the electrons must occupy the lowest available shell nearest the nucleus. So, when we are drawing the electron configuration, we have to fill up each shell in turn, starting with the lowest. We'll take a lithium atom as an example. With an atomic number of three, it must have three electrons to balance the positive charge of the three protons in the nucleus. It's worth remembering that the atomic number tells you the total number of electrons in a neutral atom. So, we put the first electron into the first shell, and the second. However, this shell can only contain a maximum of two electrons. That's one of the rules that you need to remember. The third electron, therefore, must go into the next shell, which we draw as a larger circle around the outside of the first. And that completes the electronic configuration of a lithium atom. The same process of filling up shells applies to larger atoms. You always start with the lowest available shell, and whenever a shell is full, the next electron to be added goes into the next shell. And that's pretty much it. All you need to know is how many electrons can occupy each shell, and at this level, you only need to know the rules for the first 20 elements. The maximum numbers are as follows. The first shell can contain a maximum of two electrons. The second shell, up to eight electrons. The third shell also has a maximum of eight electrons. And the 19th and 20th electrons go into the fourth shell. And this would actually represent a calcium atom. Note that as we fill up each level, we've been drawing the electrons evenly spaced out on each shell. This is to keep the diagrams tidy and make it easier to count the electrons. And what's more, there's a shorthand way of writing this down. 2, 8, 8, 2. The first number represents the inner shell or lowest energy level. The full stop shows how the electrons are separated between the shells. The second number tells us how many electrons are in the next shell, followed by the third and fourth shells. And so now it's your turn. I'd like you to draw the electron configuration of a carbon atom. Pause the video, find a piece of paper and have a go. And here is what it should look like. It has a full first shell and four electrons in the outer shell. Did you get it right? Now, how would you write the electron configuration in numbers for this atom? Pause the video again, or rewind if you need to have a think about this. The answer is that it would be written 2.4. And now that you have covered the basics of drawing electron configurations, you'll be ready to tackle our lesson, Electron Configurations of the First 20 Elements. Let's apply what you have learned. Learning task number one. Write true if the statement is correct and write false if the statement is incorrect. Learning task number two. Answer the following questions. Learning task number 5. Choose the letter of the correct answers. That ends our lesson for today. 
Please like and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell for more video updates and also for me to make a video for 3rd and 4th quarter modules.